Hi, my name's Cathy Miller and this week we're looking at resin 3D printers, like this one. Ta-da! Yes, I keep my 3D printer under a cardboard box. Resin is cured in these printers by UV light and I have a window over there and I don't want it curing where it shouldn't. So I always keep them, this has got yellow um, windows are supposed to help as well keep the UV light out but you cannot be having that box over the top. So this is my resin 3D printer and last time we looked at FDM printers and their filament printers they put a layer down at a time. This is very similar it puts a layer down at a time but it does it in a very different way it uses resin. So there's a wrap here which we're going to put some resin in in a minute and that resin um, is UV curing as I said. There's a vat and this is a see-through plastic quite dirty looking bottom. There's a screen here which has a LCD screen underneath. It shines through UV light and that screen masks bits out with either having black or clear. Great, um, it shines through. This crap fits in there. The bill plate goes down and squishes out all the resin by a really fine layer. In this case 0.025 microns. Now we set last week's filament printer at 0.1 millimeter. This is 0.025, 25 microns. So very, very much thinner, quarter the size in fact. And that really shows when you're making models because it makes such a difference. So this isn't any cubic photon. It's not an expensive machine. It's about 300 pounds. The first thing I'm gonna do is use the same files that we used last week I prepared them on the computer and I put them onto a USB stick. So here's a really brief interlude while I show you what I did on the computer. First of all, I brought in those files and I've obviously sped this up because it takes a little bit longer. And then I arranged them neatly on the build plate. It's important that they fit in the middle and then you tilt them all to an angle. Now this is very different to the way you do last week's filament printer. On this one, you want to do supports and those supports are building the other way up and I'll explain all that many times in detail in this video. But these supports basically hold this model in mid-air as the resin is put down layer by layer. So they have to be firm enough to hold it and you have that raft just to stick them all to the build plate which goes up and down. So there is an amount where you've got this resin that's stuck to the plastic that it's had the LCD light shone through and you have to pull it up and it has to be secure. And if you don't get it right, then bits will float off and it can cause problems. So in this, I try and always put these supports in places I can sand flat. I find there's just a little dimple where the support is. You have to snip them off, they never go perfect. So it's always best to try and put them so they're not on a neat surface. I always do them underneath. And the other key thing is never to have an island. An island is a piece that starts in midair with nothing supporting it. If you have that, it will drift off and that will cause you a lot of problems. And you can check for that once you run the slicer and this cuts the model into all the different layers. And you can see in that little small box, it's, I'm running up through all the layers and I'm checking to make sure that nothing starts without having been supported from the layer beneath. If it does, it will ruin your print. And it's, it's a common mistake and you will get used to how to do this. Then just pop your file on the USB stick and it's back to the printer. At the moment, I haven't got any resin in there. Um, I've cleared it out and leveled it. I had it, it went massively out of level last time. And this is the important thing on all the 3D printers. They have to be level for everything to work, especially these. If it isn't level, then the UV light shines against a thicker amount of resin. And if it's too thin, the resin doesn't stick to this build plate. Because what effectively happens is the resin sticks to here and it comes back out. And you'll see that in a minute when I do a time lapse. And as it comes back out, um, you hear a little pop sometimes, and it lifts the whole print up in the air each time. And then the print goes back down again, and the top of it gets a little another thin layer of resin. So it's a very, very different technique. It's almost the opposite way around to the um, FDM printer we looked at the last time. So I'm just going to home this so it goes right down to the bottom. So I've got my any cubic resin. I've tended to stick to the brand I know. Um, whenever you're working with resin wear gloves, this stuff is really horrible. It's not like the PLA last week, which is made from nice stuff. This stuff will probably kill you if you eat it. Enough of it. Um, so this is down here, and I need to fill up my vats so it isn't too full. 
don't forget to shake it. I don't like to turn it upside down and put many bubbles in, but I do like to make sure that the bottom is well shaken. Right, a bit of shaking letter. The one thing you'll find with a resin printer, you go through a lot of kitchen roll and isopropyl alcohol, or equivalent. Um, so just pour it in gently. I always keep these, which are dark, in a dark cupboard too. I actually have a top for this vat, and I quite often leave it because I've got the cardboard box in my printer ready to go. But because I had a levelling problem, I had the whole lot out and cleaned it out properly. This is now ready to go, so all I need to do is go back and press print. So the first layers are done at 80 seconds, and there's quite a lot of them. I do about eight solid layers. They're not part of the print at all, unlike the FDM printer where they were in the bottom bit of it. On this one, they're wrapped almost, they're just holding it to itself so that um, it sticks onto the build plate. And that stick is really important. The only time I have my prints fail is when the levelling is off, unfortunately, and it, it just causes one side not to stick. Now I put these down the middle of the plate and hopefully they'll be fine. Um, with all these printers, they're not expensive. You do sometimes have to spend quite a bit of time fettling with them and going online and just seeing how to get them to work well. Once you've got them working well, they normally print reliably. So here we are, this finished last night, and I'm going to see if I can um, get it all out and show you. You can see when it's finished, it's in the up position. If you have a cardboard box over it, it can sit like that for a while. You don't need to rush to get it out. But it shows you just how they stick to the bottom of the build plate under here. And if I pull it off, you can see. And hopefully that makes it a bit easier if you still haven't grasped how it works to show how it goes up and down. So it goes up and down. And this bit is where the, um, this layer is where the new layer is always being printed at the top. So what we have to do now is just use the scraper and scrape them off. And then pop them into some IPA, isopropyl alcohol. I use the 99% stuff. I buy it by the five litres at the moment in slightly smaller bottles because it's easier to deal with. And then you just have to clean all this off. Now, because it's been dripping overnight, there's not actually that much resin on here. But notice the gloves and the copious amounts of kitchen roll. So I, I wipe as much off as possible with just plain kitchen roll. And then I go over it again with some isopropyl alcohol. And that's it. It's away now until I need it next. And this lot can sit here um, for a few minutes. The stuff that is cured is cured, so it doesn't seem to make a huge difference if you leave them a large amount of time. And then I have a very manky brush to get into all these edges and I make sure that I clean everything off. Now you can't get into where the supports are. And normally I would take these and sit them at the desk and snip them off, but I'm just going to put it into some cleaner IPA. Next up you have to snip them off their supports. I recommend doing them at this stage because everything is still quite malleable so it's quite easy. They're very rubbery still. Just snip. Um, I'm using these Azuron um, cutters, you know sprue cutters. Um, I actually got some with my printer as well which was very good. Just snip along that edge make a nice satisfying crunch and you can see them underneath and you can see it just bends slightly which makes it easier to get into and you can generally just break it off when it gets in the way there we go and then just pop it back in there because there's a bit of exposed resin at this point that you wouldn't have had access to previously no so I've still got my gloves on because there's still raw resin in all this it's an IPA is not the nicest thing to cover your hands with so now we're on to curing. I made this in a previous video and you can see my um, little items are going round and every now and then you just need to turn them so you get a side. I mean this has got a, a little bit of a um, advantage because it's a mirror underneath and about five or ten minutes until your finger doesn't scratch them. They're quite soft when they come out and this just sets that resin a little bit more and that's why it's important to clean all the liquid resin off the outside because once you've done this stage it's stuck. Next up it's just about cleaning them up a bit and for the flat bits actually this is completely flat underneath uh, just a plain emery board will sort it very nicely. 
this um, resin isn't the best thing to breathe in. So again, just watch the dust, try not to huff it. And you just want it nice and smooth because we're going to glue these together. Now, I'm not going to paint these in this video because I want it to be very clear to you what they look like unpainted. Obviously, painting can hide a, a number of sins, but what it won't hide is any lines that show through. As you saw last time, a lot of 3D prints is about just cleaning off supports or lines or whatever. A couple of spots of super glue will glue this. There we go. And then I can put my load inside. So what I recommend a resin printer. Oh yes, I would. The quality in this is amazing. And I've got a couple of Shapeways prints here different design but the same wagon and you can see this is the strong white and flexible this is the fine ultra detail they're probably just a little bit and um, sort of slightly stronger because they're slightly thicker than this but the detail you can get on this is amazing so I'm really pleased with the quality that I get on this printer but on all these you can see they printed really well the faces are smooth I'll do a macro on them later and you can see just how amazing they look so Resin printer for small details, these are absolutely stunning and worth it. Um, there's not a lot of cleaning up to do if you put your supports in the right place. You do have to be quite clever about your supports. I always try and design my files if I'm designing them so I have sections where there's less detail where the supports won't show. They're often on inner joints or they're underneath. But generally, I'd say get one. It will really, as long as you have the skills or the ability to get things off the internet, you will not regret um, the access it gives you to bespoke one-off items that you wouldn't be able to get hold of otherwise. I mean, this is a really rare wagon. It ran on one railway and it is a small, relatively small railway in North Wales in the UK, it's Dunorwick. So 3D printing, it is definitely the way forward in the hobby for so many things that we just didn't have access to before. So there we go. I hope you found this video useful. Please cook comments below. Obviously, I'm not a technical expert on resin printing. I just use these things. Um, I've learned a few things by making mistakes. And it is a bit of trial and error when you're taking on a new technology. So be prepared to just tinker sometimes, understand if things go wrong. If you're buying Chinese printers like mine, generally I found the quality quite high on the Anycubic Photon, but it doesn't mean that yours won't have one or two tweaks that you may have to make on it. And can I take this opportunity to thank my Patreons? They support me and they enabled me to go out and buy things like resin and to spend time on doing things like this. And time is obviously my most precious commodity. So thank you to them. And if you're interested, go and check me out on Patreon. Otherwise, I'll see you next time when we're looking at how you might take something a little less complex than this, to be honest, but more like this and cast it. So this is actually a casting of a 3D print. So that's what's coming up next.